Hey guys, we're gonna cover chapter 18 of the book Automate the Boring Stuff with Python and we're gonna cover sending emails and text messages through Python. You can follow along for free by heading over to automatetheboringstuff.com or if you prefer a physical copy of the book, there's a link to purchase the book in the description down below. Now working with email can be a huge time sink and we're going to learn the tools that we can use to automate sending emails and also text messages. We will also learn how we work with text messages. So for example, if we have some background job running on our computer that takes a long time, we don't want to sit there and check on it all the time. Instead, we can work with some text message services and for example, receive a notification on our smartphone once a certain job has finished. We're going to work with Gmail and it's highly recommended to create a new Gmail account rather than using your existing accounts because we may accidentally delete some contacts or for example accidentally send emails to existing contacts and spamming people of course we don't want to do that so the first step is indeed to create a new gmail account and then of course we need to enable the api to work with it to do that we can head over to the google cloud console and here we can select the section iam and admin and for himia the first step is to create a new project so here you can click on the selection menu and by default, we don't have a project yet. So we would click on new project and then we can provide the project name and just click on create. I've done that already. So here I have my project that is being listed. And then the next step, we need to make sure that we enable the Gmail API. To do that, we head over to our menu again. Then we select API and services. And here we have an entry called library. And here we can search for any API or service that we want to enable. So let's search for Gmail. And here the first entry is the Gmail API, so we can select that. And by the way, all these steps, of course, should be taken with a new Gmail account that you created. So make sure that you're not signed in with your existing account. So once selected, we can see we can click the Enable button here to enable the Gmail API. And once we've done that, we can see that the Gmail API is now created. Now, similar to when we worked with Google Sheets, we still need to create our credentials and then create our credentials JSON file. To do that, we can click on the Create Credentials button on the top right side. And then we have to answer a couple of questions. So which API are we using? Of course, the Gmail API. And what data would you like to access? So I'm going to select User Data here. We click on Next. Now we need to provide some app information. This is, for example, shown in the consent screen that is shown when we need to verify that we actually want to access that app that we are creating. So here we need to provide the app name, the user support email, you can select the email address you created for your new Gmail account, and then the developer contact information, which can be the same email address. So we're going to save that. And then here in the fourth step, we need to select the application type. So we're working with the web application. And we can also add the authorized redirect URIs by clicking on plus at URI. And here we can add the local host on port 8080. Let's click on create. And in the last step here in the fifth step, we see our credentials and we can download that as a JSON file. So here we have our client ID and just below that there's a download button. If we press that, we are downloading the JSON file. And so on this page, we can just press done to be completed with this. And then we can rename the file. I'm renaming it to credentials.json. And then we still need to move it to the correct directory. So inside of our users directory under our username, there should be the mu underscore code directory. And this is where we can drag and drop the JSON file. Now, once we are done with that configuration, we can go ahead and open the command prompt. And here we can install easy Gmail using pip install dash dash user dash dash upgrade easy Gmail. Now, once this is done, we can type in Python in our command prompt to open the interactive Python shell. And then we start out by importing both Easy Gmail and the EOS module. So the first time we do that, we are going to be asked that we need to authenticate our Google application. And then we can go ahead and we can call chdir on the EOS module. And we reference the path to our credentials file that we downloaded before. So typically it should be in users, a new username, and then mu underscore code. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and we can call init on Easy Gmail. And if that worked properly, we should get back the email address we are going to use with our Gmail account. Now let's go ahead and let's actually send an email using Easy Gmail. 
To send an email, we're gonna have the following format. We are going to call send on easy Gmail and we are going to pass the recipient email address in here. So that's the address to which we want to send the email. Then we're going to add the subject line and then the body of the email that we want to send. Now recipient at example.com most likely doesn't exist, but let's just try this out. So we type this in. And now if we switch over to our Gmail account, we can actually see that this email was created. So here we can see we sent that email to recipient at example.com with the subject subject line and we have the body of the email. Now since we haven't verified that email we sent, we are getting this warning message here. And of course that address here could not be found, so that's why we got this bounce back. But still, sending email using easy Gmail is working properly. Now we can also pass additional arguments to the send function here. For example, a value for CC to send an email to CC to some people or BCC. In this case, we have two email addresses and they would be added as a BCC. Now, if at any point we want to see for which email address we actually configured this, so specifically for which email address the token.json file has been configured, we can call email address on easy Gmail and this is going to give us back the Gmail address associated with our credentials file. We can also use easy Gmail to read emails from our Gmail account. To do that, we of course again need to import easy Gmail and then we can list all the unread threads. Gmail itself structures mails that are coming in into threads. So here we can see in this case, we have three unread threads. And if you want to query those, we can just call unread on easy Gmail and we're storing that back in unread threads. Next, we can call a summary on easy Gmail and we pass our threads to it. And this is going to give us back an overview of the unread email threads. So here we can see we have three separate emails. We see the date as well listed here and we get a quick overview of the unread messages. If you're just interested in seeing the number of unread threads, we can just pass that to the len function. And then we can see we currently have three unread message threads. Of course, we can also have a look at individual messages. So here, for example, we take a look at the first entry in our unread threads. And then we take a look at the first message and we turn that into a string. And here we can see the subject and also the content of the very first email in our unread messages thread. And we can also reference individual attributes. So for instance, if you're only interested in the subject of that email, or for example, the body of that email, we can simply chain that together. And then we can see the specific attribute we are interested in. We can also search for specific emails by using the search method and we pass an argument to it. For example, in this case, Google, and this is going to search for all the different threads that contain Google as a keyword, for example, in the subject. So if you have a look back at our inbox, we can see we have six messages here and we can see this message here, this message here, and this message here contain Google in the subject. So if you take a look at the number of threads that are matching this search term, we can see we get back three. So these are exactly the three emails we just looked at. Now the default protocol being used to send email is SMTP, which stands for Simple Mail Transfer Protocol and it's comparable to HTTP. So what HTTP is to websites, SMTP is basically to sending emails. And SMTP specifies how emails should be laid out, how they should be encrypted, formatted, and also how they should be sent between email servers. On the other side, when we retrieve emails sent to us, we would use IMAP instead. And for both of those protocols, for SMTP and for IMAP, Python provides different modules. So the SMTP lib module for managing SMTP and the IMAP client module for working with IMAP. Now, when we want to use SMTP to send emails, then depending on which provider you're using, the SMTP server is going to be different. So for instance, for Gmail, the SMTP server domain name has the following structure, smtp.gmail.com. But if you're working with Outlook, for instance, or with Yahoo Mail, for instance, then you have to use a specific SMTP server domain name for that provider. Now, aside from the server domain name, there's also a port that is being used and that's used for command encryption, which is covered by TLS. And typically that's the port 587, but some providers have a different port name. So for instance, AT&T and Verizon do have the port 465, so in that case, it would be slightly different. 
So if we want to use what we just learned, we need to make sure that we import the SMTP lib module and then we can call SMTP on our module here and we can provide the server domain name as well as a port. So for Gmail, that would be smtp.gmail.com and the default port 587. And then we can have a look at the type of object by passing SMTP object to the type function here. And then we see that there's an SMTP object actually stored in our variable that we defined. Now, once we have that SMTP object, we can call the ELO function to connect to that SMTP server. And as long as we get 250 back as part of the response, we know everything worked properly because that's the code for a successful connection. Now, if we are using an SMTP server that's connected on port 587, as is the case for Gmail, we need to call the start TLS method next. And that's because if we use port 587, we are using TLS encryption. If instead we are connecting to port 465, as is the case with Verizon, for example, then the encryption is already set up and we can skip the step. Now, after that, we can log into our SMTP server by calling the login method. And here we would provide our login name and the password. So the login is typically the email address. And then the password is, of course, the password you would use to authenticate and sign into, for instance, your Gmail account. As a quick note, though, Gmail does not support this kind of SMTP login anymore because it's deemed less secure. So unfortunately, it won't work for Gmail. Of course, we can also disconnect from our SMTP server by simply calling quit on our SMTP object. Now, if instead of sending email, we want to retrieve emails, we would use IMAP as a protocol. That is the Internet Message Access Protocol. And for that, Python provides the IMAP client module, which can then interact with our IMAP server and download messages, which we can, for example, filter for or search for. In order to use that, we would install IMAP client and also PyZmail from a terminal. And then the general approach would be to import the client, specify the client credentials, especially the IMAP server, and then to sign into that server. And then you can go ahead and, for example, select the folder or search for specific emails. Now, unfortunately, Google restricted this kind of authentication using the IMAP login method because it can be insecure. So unfortunately, this is not a really viable option anymore to directly access the information. But in general, similar to SMTP, for different providers, you have different IMAP server domain names. So for example, for Gmail, that name is imap.gmail.com. And then of course, for Outlook and Hotmail, for instance, there's a separate IMAP server that has to be used. Aside from sending and receiving emails, we can also use Python to send and receive text messages. And for that, we can use an SMS gateway. There are a couple of ones available. A really good one and a free one is Twilio. And Twilio has a free trial that we can use in order to test sending text messages to our phones. To do that, we can head over to twilio.com and we can set up our own account. And once you have done that, you will get access to an account SID and to an authentication token. In fact, if you go to the dashboard page and you scroll down a little bit, you can see the account information with the information contained here. And we can use this to use Twilio to send text messages to us. Now, during your setup process, you will also be asked to provide a phone number so you can enter your own phone number and thereby send text messages to yourself. Now, the first step to take is to actually install the Twilio Python module. And to do that, we are going to use pip again. So we type in pip install user upgrade Twilio. And this is going to install the Twilio module for us. Now, once Twilio has been installed properly, we can then go ahead and open the Python REPL again by just typing in Python from our terminal. And then we can import client from twilio.rest. So we're going to use the Twilio API. And after that, we can set up our account SID. Again, we need to copy this over from your Twilio account. And you also need to copy over your authentication token and enter it as well. Then we are going to use both the account SID and the authentication token as arguments to client and we're going to set up a new Twilio client. Next, we pull and provide our Twilio number that we can create in our Twilio account, and we need to specify our cell phone number. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and we can call messages.create 
on the Twilio client that we created and we can pass some body text. For example, Mr. Watson, come here, I want to see you. Then we pass my Twilio number to the argument from and my cell phone number to two. And that's going to send a text message to the cell phone number that we provided. Let's have a look at the practice questions. The first one, what is the protocol for sending email and what is the protocol for checking and receiving email? So we would use SMTP for sending email and IMAP for checking for and receiving email. What four SMTP lib functions or methods must you call to log into an SMTP server? So first we have to call SMTP on SMTP lib, then we need to call ELO and after that we have to call start TLS for ensuring that TLS is supported. And then finally we need to call login to sign into the SMTP server. What two IMAP client functions or method must you call to log into an IMAP server? So here we need to first call IMAP client and then log in. What kind of argument do you pass to IMAP object.search? So we put pass a list of strings of IMAP keywords, for example, before date or from string or scene. What do you do if your code gets an error message that says got more than 10,000 bytes? So in that case, we would assign the variable max line, which we call on IMAP lib, and set it to large integer value, for example, 10 million. The IMAP client module handles connecting to an IMAP server and finding emails. What is one module that handles reading the emails that IMAP client collects? So for that, we can use the PyZmail module, which is reading downloaded emails. When using the Gmail API, what are the credentials JSON and token JSON files? So the credential JSON and token JSON files tell the easy Gmail module which Google account to use when we are accessing Gmail. In the Gmail API, what's the difference between a thread and a message object? So a message refers to a single email, while a thread would contain all the back and forth so the replies to an email as well. Using easygmail.search, how can you find emails that have file attachments? So for that, we would use the search method and we would include the has attachment text in a string. What three pieces of information do you need from Twilio before you can send text messages? So we need the Twilio account SID number, the authentication token number, and the Twilio phone number. In this video, we covered how we can send and receive email using the easy Gmail module or using SMTP and IMAP. We also had a look at receiving text messages by using Twilio. In the next video, we are going to have a look at how we can manipulate images. Feel free to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date and see you guys in the next video.